right, it's the top of the hour. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So welcome everybody to the UX functional group update. Uh, April 2nd, just missed April Fool's Day by one day. So today I'm gonna to go over uh, the results of our quarter one OKRs, uh, talk a little bit about epics, uh, and then uh, spend a couple of seconds on hiring. So for our Q1 uh, OKRs, um, first one I'll talk about is the reduce the installation time of DevOps for Kubernetes by 50%. Very ambitious <laughs> goal. Um, and the goal here was to go through the, the flow of installation um, and, and look for ways that we could streamline it and make it as easy as possible for even a very beginner to do. Um, so from the outset, what we did was we put together a demo with, with Mark Punsack to kind of understand what that flow looks like. Um, and in doing that flow, we realized that there were a lot more problem, problems with it than we had anticipated. Um, initially, we thought what we would do would be to do a demo, then start doing some testing with users, come up with some quick wins, how to make it more streamlined, implement those, then do more testing. Um, and what we saw in that demo with Mark was that unless you were an expert, it was going to be very difficult for you to get through that demo. It would have been frustrating for our, our um, testers, um, and it would have probably been very expensive <laughs> because the test itself with Mark took probably an hour and a half. Um, so what we did was we took that demo and we started working through everything we saw in that demo that could be improved. Um, we came up with issues, um, both short-term and long-term, and we started pushing those forward. We worked really close with both Mark and Fabio on that. Um, unfortunately, we only made it, my estimation is about 33%, um, not the most scientific estimation due to the fact that um, we could not retest. So that 33% is uh, all the effort we put into the demo, the research, the creation of issues, and the UX-ready issues that we have. Um, so I think the accomplishments there were... Um, getting that initial demo to really understand what wasn't working, identifying those short-term, long-term improvements, and then creating a roadmap. And we do have a pretty good roadmap. We, we know what it looks like to make this better. The challenges that we had were that, unfortunately, our OKRs were not solidified until just about the 22nd of January. So we missed two scheduling for releases. Um, so it was kind of impossible for us to get those uh, improvements into an actual milestone. Um, and of course, the demo was so broken that it was difficult to actually do the user testing that we thought we were going to do. Um, and of course, those, those issues were spread out over three releases. So we are gonna carry this on into Q2. We've done a lot of work here, and I think that as we start to see those come through, um, we'll kind of get a snowball effect where those improvements will just add one upon the other and improve that flow completely. Um, did a little bit better with our design pattern library. So the pattern library is uh, setting our usability standards. So it's not about documenting uh, colors and typography. While that's part of it, the bigger idea here is to establish um, patterns that we know we can use when certain problems come up. So that's when do we use a modal, when do we use a button, when do we use forms, what kind of forms do we use, when do we use tabs versus a filter or sort, uh, those kinds of things. We made it 64% of the way through. Um, we got all the leftover patterns from phase one documented and every issue in phase two is either completed or in final review. So it will be done uh, in 10.8, we just missed the deadline. Uh, challenges that we had, uh, sketch files are binary files, so you cannot really work with them in a Git workflow. There's no way to branch and then merge. So reviews took a really long time. Um, as, as one designer was reviewing, other designers were working in the file uh, and updating, so everything had to, has to be manually merged. It just makes it take a lot longer. Um, we're also doing hiring, which really slowed us down, um, and we focused on hiring deliverables and then the OKRs uh, that pertain to Kubernetes uh, and operations engineers. So our own issues took a little bit of hit uh, in that. Um, and then 
We did really well on our established operations engineers as a first class citizen. I'm really proud of the work that Sarah and Catherine did here. Um, the goal here was to understand who operations DevOps engineers are. Um, what are their challenges? What are the common tasks? What is it that they're looking for in a tool that we can provide? Um, and they did an excellent job. You can actually link to the report that they produced uh, from that research. And they are in the middle of just finalizing the uh, user interviews that they've done, um, as well as uh, laying out what that roadmap looks like. Um, so the work here was really, really well done. And I think Bill Duncan, I think your mic is on. You're not muted. I'm hearing a lot of noise in my ear. It's the only person I can see without a mute. So sorry to call you out, but it's really distracting <laughs> when you're trying to concentrate on what you're saying. Um, so really happy with that. I do encourage everyone to take a look uh, at that report. There's some really interesting information there. Uh, and then again, our, our own UX issues got pushed aside a little bit. We got to 63% uh, on our design.gitlab. The goal of design.gitlab is to take all of those patterns and make them publicly available uh, for not just our, our uh, designers, but really it, it, the goal here is to be more um, front end product facing with this. Um, we know what, what our design patterns are. We have them all in our sketch documents. Um, those need to be something that are searchable by the rest of the company so that we are not a bottleneck for um, coming up with, with, with good solutions and being consistent. Um, so m the good things that happened with this were that we were able to update and record all the standards that are already in the current guide. So we're not missing any of that. And we've actually added a lot of patterns that were not currently recorded. If you go to the handbook to our UX guide, which I will add a link on this slide to our old guide so that you have some context, um, there's a lot of stuff that's outdated there. Um, again, the challenges were increased volume of deliverables. Um, we had a lot of dependencies on front end for review and assistance in some aspects of that code base. Um, and I would say that there was definitely some, some time, poor time management on our part. Um, I think what we learned from that experience is that uh, set incremental deadlines for these issues. Uh, it keeps them a little bit more at the forefront. It makes it harder to um, focus on milestone deliverables over the deliverables that we really need to accomplish for ourselves. So definitely a, a good lesson learned there. Uh, we also had a goal to write three public blog, blog posts and we accomplished that. Um, there's a link to each of the blog posts here if you're interested in reading. So those are our Q1 OKRs. We're still, I believe, finalizing Q2, so I'll talk about those in our next FGU. Um, another big thing that we've been working on alongside um, product is defining epics for, for a set of issues um, so that both front end, well not both, all three, back end, front end, and UX can take a look at these epics understand what product is trying to achieve and make sure that we uh, can help them achieve that. Um, and this is a process that is ongoing. We're just starting it now, so there's a lot of bugs to work out. Uh, but the goal here is to have front end, back end, and UX take a look at these issues, give feedback, anything that's missing, requirements, documentation, challenges that we see, make sure that there's been scope for UX discovery allotted so that UX has time to actually look at these issues and provide valuable input. Um, so that is a big push that, that we're going through right now. Um, you can read about it in the handbook. Um, and if you're curious about how we're doing this, you can always um, send me a chat message and can talk to a little bit more about it. I've actually created a spreadsheet to kind of document what I'm looking for and, and, and how I'm going through each of those issues. And lastly, for hiring, we have a new UX designer starting April 16th. I didn't put a link uh, to their information uh, because uh, we don't want to make that public until they actually start. Um, but I will definitely introduce, that, introduce them next time around. And we will be looking to hire another UX designer in Q2. So if you know any uh, awesome UX designers that would just love to come and work at GitLab, please let me know. We're definitely uh, interested in, in hiring someone soon. <laughs> So with that, uh, any questions? I know it's kind of a, a light day today with the holidays and everything.
I will you absolutely definitely. Yep. Yeah, we, we don't have it up officially yet. Uh, it should be this week. So I'll make sure that I, I share that tweet. Hey, Sarah, uh, something else. What, what are you most excited about, about the things that you've been working on with your team? Well, I think the most exciting thing is actually the operations uh, results that we got. I think that we've really been making this huge push to, to do an operations dashboard, complete DevOps, and in having a clearer picture, um, some of the things that we found in that report were actually really surprising to us. They, they were unexpected. And I feel like we have a lot of good insights into how to really make this valuable for, for operations. Um, so I'm really excited about that. We'll be working on the dashboard alongside um, CICD and, and then there's some other stuff we're doing with platform, which is, is pretty exciting in that area. What was unexpected? Uh, I think there was this idea that a lot of operations engineers were very focused, uh, they're very specialized. And what we found was that's not the case at all. A lot of them are wearing many, many hats. Um, a lot of them are uh, full stack developers that have kind of been roped into becoming an operations engineer and handling that for the company, which once I thought about my own experiences in past companies, that wasn't very surprising at all, um, especially in startups or small to mid-sized companies. Um, you're, you're more likely to have people that are generalists rather than specialists. So I think that's something to take into account when we're, when we're putting this together. Hey, Sarah, what, what, um, are, what are your takeaways from uh, the, the operations work? I, I, I read the doc. I, I think one thing that stands out is that people want a single place. And, and I think uh, Datadoc calls this the trifecta of metrics, tracing, and logs, like one place where you can find all three. Uh, preferably with a link to the application. And yeah. the other thing was, I think, two-factor for approvals. I didn't quite get that because we have two-factor and we have approvals. Uh, but <laughs> but how, would you, how would you summarize the, the results? Uh, that's a tough one, Sid. Put me on the spot. Summarize the results of a, of a very long report. Um, a, a fool can ask I more questions than 10 wise people can ask. <laughs> Um, so I think, I think what, what I, my takeaway from that is, is um, that we definitely do need to, to create one space. I think what we've been doing is really um, creating different areas that, of interest for operations engineers, but we have not brought that into one place where they can come and get everything they need without having to bounce around, without having to really connect the dots. So I think that that's going to be a big focus, especially with this operations health dashboard that we're doing. Um, and I think that what we really need to do now is identify the metrics that should be included. I think some of that's going to be in those user interview follow-ups. Uh, that report, again, is, will be done this week. Um, that'll give us some more insight into those metrics. Um, and I think that what's exciting to me about it, too, that I take away is, is that um, there's this deep need for it. Everyone was excited about it. Everyone was like, yes, we're so glad that you're doing this. This is the tool that we need. And they were excited to be part of, of the talk about it. So just getting that um, really detailed feedback about who they are, what they're looking for, and the fact that they're hungry for it um, really, I think, puts us in a, in a great position. I see there's some questions here in the chat. Um, so reduce time for DevOps, is that auto DevOps? Ah, yeah, William. So that has to do with the, the and that, that is really confusing because there's a lot of different pieces to that. So I can understand that question. Um, so what we focused on, because there are so many different pieces, is that flow, the auto DevOps with Kubernetes. So what does it look like if you're setting that up with Kubernetes? Um, and, and that was the focus of that particular uh, demo. If you haven't watched the demo, I really I highly suggest that you do. And there's a lot of really good um, follow up uh, kind of summarization of, of what we found in there uh, to be helpful moving forward. Uh, and then there was another question. Documentation. Is there documentation on the UI component templates that is published? We have internal projects for planning metrics would be awesome to reuse GitLab UI. Uh, for graphs. Yeah, so that's something that <laughs> we are, we're working on. I believe right now we're actually in the process of working with Josh uh, in monitoring on graphs and determining 
which graphing and charting uh, plugins or systems that we're going to use, and then how we're going to design um, within those constraints. So I would say that, no, we don't have those yet um, for graphs. Um, but if there's other areas that you're interested in, uh, shoot me a message and I'll, I'm happy to walk you through what we have and where there's some gaps. You may actually have some insight into something we're missing. So I'd love to talk more about that. Any other questions? Great questions today. Thank you. I don't normally get questions, so I'm really excited. <laughs> All right. I want to count down. Four, three, two, yeah, sir. I have another one. Uh, what what oh, is, is there anything so in terms of UX that has been worked on uh, in terms of changes in GitLab that you're looking forward to to see being actually released into the product? Yes, 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 wow. yes, yes. I'm super excited about, and I think this was touched on in the last FGU. I was um, away, and Pedro did the last functional group update for me. Um, but we are redesigning our discussion tab uh, for both issues and merge requests. We've had a lot of people say that it's overwhelming, that it feels um, very difficult for them to parse through who's saying what. There's a lot of activity mixed in with, with comments. And, and so we really focused in on how we could improve that. And it's actually in several different issues. Um, one is through having the ability to see only comments or see only activity um, or see a combination of both. Um, that is an issue that's still in flight, so we don't have a 100% uh, definitive uh, answer on that, but we're working on it right now. And then the other is an actual redesign of the comments uh, and the way they're structured to make it, give a better visual hierarchy so that when you're scanning down, it's really easy to see that, that flow of conversation. So I'm really excited for that. That's coming out in 11. So that's great, Sarah. Thanks. I have another question, uh, and this is the last one, sure. I promise. What can we <laughs> as, okay. as non UXers do to work together better with the UX team? Oh man, that's a loaded question. Because my answer is is talk to us more. <laughs> but then that's gonna that's gonna create even more work. But uh, bring it on. I think that um, everybody here has some understanding of, of user experience. We're all users, we're all using GitLab, we're all using other applications. And I think it's really important um, to note that everybody's opinion matters. Um, and, and while we have uh, domain expertise and we have uh, education and a background in doing this, it's really good to have those conversations with actual users and see things from a different perspective. Um, and we do that a lot with our user research, um, but it's something that I'd love to do even more with, with people here at the company and just get more feedback from them on, on what um, we can do. Exactly, and Tori says in the chat, communication, just talk to us, um, ping us in issues, send us chat messages, set up coffee chats. I would be more than happy to sit in a coffee chat and let you kvetch to me about everything that bothers you. Um, I will write it all down and see what we can do. It's a, it's a dangerous proposition for me, but I'm, I'm really more than happy to do it. Thanks, Sarah. Awesome, thanks, Yope. I really appreciate the awesome questions, Sid, Yope, uh, William. And Mac, it was really great to have some questions today. So with that, I think I'm going to let everybody go. And I will see you in the team call. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.